guys welcome back to John's workshop and in this video we're going to be continuing on with the cylinder and the cylinder head for the Mark engine and this will be part two which is the second operations on both so what we're going to be doing is taking off the chucking piece off the cylinder and finishing this to length finishing the bore honing the bore uh, all on the lathe we will then put the cylinder head up on the lathe finish the back face of the cylinder head and turn the register that fits into the bore at the top so that's the lathe work once we've got all of that done we'll then attach both of these together we'll go to the mill and we will cut the angled seat face um, for the for the valve and the port to let the gases in and out um, during operation so that's largely the content of this video um, I'm out here it's New Year's Day we'll not do Happy New Year because by the time this goes out it, it'll be long forgotten and I, I've already done a lot of that anyway um, so so I'm out here New Year's Day as I said I've got a, a cup of green tea and not because I'd had a particularly heavy New Year's Eve in fact quite the opposite um, I think I may have got you know what the unmentionable I'm not really sure yet but I've got a bit of a tickly cough and been feeling a bit groggy if I'm honest for the last 48 hours so if you hear me coughing that's what it is so apologies for that in advance I'll try and edit most of that out if I can uh, you can see behind me um, we've got the solution to the, st the new sticker board so I'm expanding across onto my sort of stores covered um, with the rest of the stickers so that's where they're going to go so for the, for the ones that I announced in my recent blether you'll see you'll see your stickers up there and that's where any new ones will go as they come in so so without any further babbling we will go uh, to the lathe and we'll get the cylinder set up and we'll start machining the second ends. So just before we go to the lathe I need some way of knowing how to finish this to overall length because obviously the back end of this is going to be buried inside the chuck when I'm set up. So what we've done is we've put a 3mm slip in one of the three mm, in the bottom 3mm groove I've done a conversion from metric to imperial of my drop, what my drop should be down to that down to that slip face or down to that groove face and we should be 2.598 and we're 2.598 and oh, where was the camera, there we go we're 2.598 and a bit of change, probably a couple of tenths so pretty much bob on where, it's, where it needs to be so that's good, so that what that means now I've qualified where that last groove is in relation to the top of the cylinder face so when this is loaded up in the machine I can use the same method and I can use a different obviously a different stick in the mic and I can measure the depth from the back face, if you like the bottom face of the cylinder to the other side of that slip and that's the easiest way of controlling the overall length so I've got to, I'm making that bottom groove basically my reference or my datum for finishing off so that's how we're going to do it nice and simple so we'll go and get this set up in the four jaw now and I'll bring you back when we're ready to part off the chucking piece okay just a, a point of note something worth pointing out and I've seen again I've seen a few people doing this and it's just something I'm just trying to be helpful and point some stuff out where I see it and something that I'm quite particular about and I know I might look like a messy bugger at times where I've got bits of brass swarf all over the top here and stuff like that but every time I come to do a tool change and you may or may not have seen me do this I always check the location areas are really clean and the same thing on the back of the tool holder so these are the tool holders I made yes you know there's crap all over the top of them but I always check to make sure that these dovetails are absolutely spotlessly clean before I then load that to the tool post and I don't need to tell you why I'm doing that because it should be fairly obvious but I have seen one or two other people doing tool changes well there's all swarf and bits of muck and stuff like that and you know two things one is you're going to damage your tool post you're going to damage your tool holders but more more than that you're going to reduce your rigidity for your machining because you've not got good face contact if you've got you know swarf stuck in between 
those contact areas, you're going to have point contact, which is going to make your whole machining setup very, very weak. So just a bit of a tip, and it's just good housekeeping. And I know, yes, the rest of my lathe's quite dirty, but where it matters, I'm always quite particular to make sure that everything's as clean as clean as can be. You know, there's no point cleaning everything right down each time because the first thing I'm going to do now is put a cut on and get it all dirty again. But just making sure that the location diameters, same thing when you're slewing your tool post round to a different angle. You know, if you're doing that and this and the bottom here where it's all going to move is covered in swarf, then all you're going to do is drag that swarf underneath your tool post and then clamp down on top of it, which is going to mess up all the surfaces on the on your top of your compound slide underneath it's going to mean you've got point contact it's going to weaken your setup again so all of these things around cleanliness are really really important and if we go down the stage further you know if i want to alter the angle of the compound slide same deal you know there's no point spinning this round and dragging bits of swarf in underneath it and expecting it to be good it's just about keeping clean and good housekeeping when you're moving anything where it really matters so I thought that might be a useful tip just to bear in mind and try and remember uh, and it's difficult at times you just want to crack on and do the job but that extra couple of minutes just ensures that you preserve your machine and your tooling as long as possible enough lecturing let's get on with the machining we've finished our face to what we think is the right dimension so we're just going to check that again with the depth mic we're aiming for 3937 which is 10 millimeters and we've got 393 and a half probably something like that so a couple of tenths away from where it should be happy with that just take the slip out so we're just going to chamfer this corner and then we're going to set up to put a big chamfer in here in the bore which was clearance for the conrod so as the pistons going up and down and the conrods articulating like this it needs clearance and there's a big chamfer needs to be turned in there so I'll chamfer the OD off camera and I'll bring you back when we put in this big 45 degree chamfer in the bore
Right guys, a bit crude. So what I've done is got a length of 12mm bar, cut a slot in the end of it, wrapped some emery round it, and what I'm doing is just working the bore a bit with the emery because I now I've got this 10 microns taper, so I'm just trying to work that out so that we're as parallel as possible and I'm also taking some of the machining marks out even though they're very light and then once we've done that we're going to repurpose this and wrap some scotch bright around it different grades and we're going to go back through and through and through the bore so I'm just taking it nice and steady so I'll just move the camera because it's right in my way but you'll get the idea how I'm using it And what you can do when the paper's worn out, so you can see the area that it's been working in there, hopefully, if the camera's not blowing out with the light. There we go. So you can see the area that's been working in. You can just tear that area off, wrap it around again, and then you just add a bit more weight on with the cross slide and bring it a bit further out. So nice and simple. And very effective that's a lovely finish in there now that is really nice so i'll persevere with this for a little bit and then we'll bring you back and we'll try and get some decent camera shots of the ball when i'm done it's not quite what i wanted it's not honed with stones but it's going to be pretty close so i'll bring you back when we're finished all right we've finished our improvised honing you can see the mandrel now with a slot in it for the emery paper and then all I did, not this bit of scotch bright, I had a wider bit. We just wrapped it round three or four times and then I was just holding it gently, finger and thumb at the back and going up and down the bore and that's worked out really well. I've been doing some measurement as well and I've got the 10 microns taper down to as best I can measure it, two or three microns taper through the bore so I'm fairly happy that we've got that to a reasonable state so not sure how well the camera's going to show this but if you can see the bore down there let me just try and I'll reposition and put the light down it so you can see it about the best I'm going to get. You can see the bore there, we've got no machining marks in there. Very very nice. Like I say, and I keep saying, first one of these I've ever built, so I really don't know if that's good enough, not good enough, needs something different, really don't know. We'll find out when we stick it all together and try and get it running I suppose. Right, okay, so that's our cylinder complete, other than the milling work needs done. So what I'm going to do now is get the cylinder head back in and we'll finish that off.
So I'm at finished overall thickness. I'm now I've changed my tool out for one with a sharper radius, and we're going to machine the register with with its one mil deep, if you like, one mil step. Right guys, we're going to give this a go, and this is an attempt not to have to kick my head over at an angle. And this was just something that I thought we'd give a try. Now, it looks a little bit Heath Robinson, but we'll give it a try. It's pretty sturdy. So I've got my angle table on the bed, set to the right angle for the valve seat face. I've got my four-jaw chuck off my small rotary table that fits this quite well, so we've dropped that on. I've cocked the back face of the angle table into the x-axis so that I know my angle is true and it's not skewed. And we've got my part in, we've clocked it up and down the outside, we know it's sitting square. And that was difficult because of the angle that we're sitting at as is clocking in the top. So what I want to do now is make sure that I've got the part oriented right with the slots on the top before we put the angled valve seat face in here. So I'm clocking the fins up on the top and as you can see this is quite not easy because it's obviously leaning at an angle. So what I'm having to do is I'm watching the ball and I'm moving two axes at once, the quill and the y axis to clock across here. But what it means is I can't watch the clock. So um, and then what we're going to do is I've got it somewhere near. We're just going to move the whole rotary table rotationally to get this right. Well, at least that's the plan. So I will move the camera, get it in on the clock so you can see what I'm doing, and we'll 
see if we can get this clocked in. Alright, let's give this a go. So we're pretty much zero at that end. And we're now going to start winding across the slot. And we're about 0.25 plus at that end. I'll just get my knocker. So we're plus at that end. So we'll see if we can influence that. Hmm, that's maybe not going to work, Mr. John. Or maybe I just got lucky. I just got lucky. <laughs> oh dear, I don't know how I managed that. For the zero fanatics, we'll put that on zero. I'm just going to travel back the way. Good enough for what we're doing here. I'll nip it up at that and we'll get an end mill set up and start putting the, the valve seat facing. There we go guys, I had to change my cutter with a high helix solid carbide end mill, 12 millimeters coated and we're running the mill absolutely flat out, 1600 RPM. Other than filling my fingers with tiny tiny little bits of swarf we have successfully got our valve flat onto the cylinder and the cylinder head and that's a very nice surface finish don't know whether I'll need to do anything else to that but it's almost like a ground finish which I'm pleased with so We'll now move on to the next bit which is putting the port into the cylinder and I'll bring you back when we're doing that.
Well there we go, that's got our port put into the into the valve seat face. That's gone very nicely. So there's just one operation left to do on this now, which is to put the four holes in the bottom end, same as the ones in the top for fixing it down to the engine. The top looks a bit scratched up, that's just an oil stone, so I ran an oil stone over that once I'd done the final countersinking of the holes just to remove any secondary burrs. It's not seen, I'm quite comfortable that that's okay, it's just oil stone marks, that's why that looks the way it does. And yeah, that's come out really well. I'm really pleased with how that's all machined. So I'll bring you back when we're doing the final operation, which is the holes in the base. There we go guys, that's the end of the cylinder and cylinder head manufacture. I know we split that into two separate episodes, but that was because of the way, you know, the amount of work there is in these two components. So really, really pleased with those um, and I've really enjoyed them. I've really enjoyed manufacturing those. There's been some really nice, interesting setups, especially on the second ends in this video that you've just watched. So there you can see the valve seat face and the cylinder head all fitted and the bore with the holes in the bottom, the fixing holes and I've checked those against the base plate and everything lines up so that's all good. So we'll call that a success for now. So I hope you've enjoyed the setups that have been in there and, and like the setups over the two episodes really, the way I machine the cylinder head and cylinder all in one operation then split them all around different ways of work holding, different challenges that a part like that presents itself um, when, you, when you're working through it. So yeah, I've really enjoyed manufacturing that and doing it out of stainless as well. It's the first proper material if you want to call it that that I've machined in here that's not just been mild steel or aluminium or whatever so it's been it's been good good fun I've enjoyed it so hope you've enjoyed that and thank you to the subscribers as usual thank you to the new subscribers that are coming along and we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else and I deserve a bit of this now I'm done with machining next week.